Good morning. Welcome to Westview Baptist Church. My name is Rick Bowling. I'm the pastor here. We're glad you could join us today. Uh, if you would like to support the ministry of, that we're doing here online, uh, you may do that by going on our website at wbcshelby.org. We're so glad that you can be a part of this today. Today, if you notice that the uh, filming is a little bit fuzzy, the, the video, and that's intentional, because today we're going to take a walk. We're going to take a walk just as some others had done a long time ago in the Scripture as they walked on a road to Emmaus. The Scripture that we will be looking at is in Luke chapter 24, uh, verses 13 through 35. And the title of our message is Taste and See. Uh, that comes from Psalm 34, 8. 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who take refuge in Him. So let's begin our walk today. And, you know, I have to think about this today as we were, uh, as I was looking in the Scriptures. The death of Jesus had just taken place. And it was a time of that, that morning. And so we know this was sometime that day. Uh, these two men were on a journey. They were leaving Jerusalem. And the scripture says they were, they were on their way uh, to a village named Emmaus. It was about seven miles away from where they were. And here they are. They're walking. They're talking about all the different things that have taken place, the events, uh, and just in a moment as they're, they're speaking, Jesus comes up himself. And, you know, he's like, well, first of all, what I want to say is that they didn't recognize him. It says the scripture kept him, uh, kept them from recognizing him. I don't know if you've ever been in a place like that. I know that I have. And, you know, even looking at this video from where you are, you might not be able to recognize me on this video because I'm far enough away from it. <laughs> you know, we probably have all done it, it within about, oh, I don't know, it was last September. My parents, uh, we had a celebration for both my parents. It was their 90th birthday celebration. And so a lot of friends and family, church families, and I mean, it, it was an exciting time. And so here we are, and I knew most of the people there but uh, this lady comes up to me, and she says hello, and, and, and it's very loud. There's a lot of people in the room. And I looked at her, and I thought, she looks a little familiar, but I couldn't quite figure out who it was. And I was having a difficult time where we were standing here, and, her, and so the interchange just lasted for about 30 seconds or so, and, and we went on. Someone else walked up. And I walked away from there thinking, oh, well, well, that must have been someone in my mom's church and my dad's church there that I, I just didn't know. And I go on about my business, and about, I don't know, a week later, my mom and I are talking, and she said, well, did you see so-and-so there? And in that moment, it was like somebody just pulled the veil off of my eyes. I was like, oh, my goodness, that's who it was. It was a first cousin of mine that I hadn't seen in probably maybe eight or ten years. And I just didn't recognize her. I, I, I don't know why I was kept from recognizing her. But we know in the scriptures that Jesus said that these men were kept from recognizing him. And, it, you know, there were things that he had said previously in the scriptures that the disciples were not able to receive, such as the resurrection. So here they are. They're, they're on this road. And as we see in the scriptures, they're walking. It says they were very downcast. You can imagine. And so Jesus comes up and he goes, well, you know, what are you discussing together as you walk along the way? And they just stood still. I mean, they were shocked. They're like, and I, I'm paraphrasing, they're like, man, what? What do you mean, what are we talking about? Do you not know what's going on? They just couldn't believe that this man had not heard about the things that had just happened. And Jesus says, what things? What things happened? 
And so he begins to share. And, you know, I don't, before I say anything else about that, you know, we all have, have been in a place where we've lost a loved one. We've had deep loss. And as I walk through this sanctuary, there's a reason I did this today. You can look at every one of these pews and see how they're empty. There's no one in here but me. No one's been in here to worship since, I believe it was May 8th. Yeah, the 15th was our first Sunday not to worship. So for the last six, seven weeks, we have not been together as a body. And that's, that's been a huge loss, not only for us, but for all of you watching that are missing your church family. These men were distraught because here they were, their, their Messiah, their friend, their mentor. He had been killed. But look what happens. They begin to share with what is taking place as this disbelief of, of what has taken place already on their journey. We see that God has caringly sent someone to them. He sent his only son. Wow. That brings a different meaning and connotation as you see it here. And suddenly this is what he says or what they say to him. When he says what things, they say, you know, about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priest and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we hope that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and, and found it just as the, woman had, the women had said. But they did not see Jesus. In that moment, these two men were very vulnerable. Cleopas and, and the other one other man isn't it interesting that that jesus came up and caringly began to inquire to them and in their vulnerability they began to to open up and share their hearts he's done that to us when we've had loss with loved ones and he's probably doing that now hopefully that as we're making phone calls or we're doing uh, zoom uh, facetiming the different things the way we're connecting he will caringly send those in the name of Jesus. And we see what he did here. Oh, wow. They were tasting and seeing Jesus in their journey, and they didn't even know it. Well, Jesus began, they began to taste and see him as he began to speak. Listen to his words that he says here in verse 25. He says, How foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And they began to listen to the truth, the truth of the scriptures and this incredible love that, that he had for them. You know, I think about the prophet Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 31, 3, he says, The Lord loves us with an everlasting love. It's the same love that, that Paul talks about that's greater than, than any prophecy, than, than any uh, gift such as speaking in tongues then any act or deed, love is greater. God lovingly came, and he now lovingly began to share the truth of the Word of God. God will do that with us, and he'll do it through other people. There was a young man that was recently in our church. His name was Steve Collins. He's the executive 
executive director of South Mountain Christian Camp. And he came and spoke at our church, but um, he has a book that he recently wrote called Footsteps of Faith. And so I've been reading through it, incredible stories of sharing God's love with, with the campers. And one of the stories, he talks about a young man. This young man showed up at camp. He'd been there the year before. Um, he was very disruptive uh, in the prior year. And already in the first week, the first few days, uh, the counselors were having trouble. And finally, Steve pulled him over to the side. They called his mother. His mother talked to him on the phone, or grandmother. And when he got off the phone, as Steve describes in his book, this little boy looked down at the ground, very downcast like Cleopas and his friend. And he reached down and he was picking a scab on his knee. And he said, I'm just a bad boy. And Steve looked at him and he said, no, you're not bad, a bad boy. Your behavior might have been bad. And God wants you to turn away from that. But God loves you. He loves you far beyond what you can even imagine. And the little boy looked up at him with a smile. And he said, from that point forward, that little boy became a model camper the rest of the week. And at the end of the week, they had a, a, a service. And he came and confessed his sins and said that, and, and uh, accepted Jesus as his Savior. His... Uh, incredible story of how the love of God as he reached out with that everlasting love and changed this little boy's life. He does that for each one of us and he's doing that right now in the midst of what we're going through. If we'll just taste and see the goodness of God. Well, look what he says here. Not only does he taste and see him in the journey, but we begin to see how things begin to take a little turn. And we see how he begins to taste and see him and the hospitality that is provided and the, the fellowship they have at the table with Jesus. Look at verse 28. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it's nearly evening. The day's almost over. And so Jesus goes in and stays with them. And so we begin to see that the heart of these two men had become very pliable. They were hospitable towards Jesus. And, and suddenly, this, as Jesus is reaching in towards them, they were reaching back towards Jesus. That agape, that unconditional pursuit had softened their hearts. There was something that was starting to take place inside. It was exciting. Some, maybe this spark of hope, they couldn't put their finger on it. Their minds weren't fully understanding it. But something was transpiring. And suddenly in that moment, the roles begin to change while they're there at the table. Look what happens in verse 30. When he was at the table with them, he's talking about Jesus, he took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he began to give it to them. Christ, uh, he came as a guest of these two men, and suddenly he became the host. You know, this was not an unusual um, description of Jesus. We see in the scriptures that he had ordered the food before when he fed the 5,000 with the disciples and, and they had seen him to, to get these loaves over in, in uh, Luke chapter 9 verses 7 through 20 and, and the miracle that took place and in that moment when he did that he took the loaves up and he broke it and he said and, and he gave thanks as he broke the bread and so not only did he order the food but we see over in, in the scripture just not too many days ago at the Passover feast with the disciples that he took the bread, the bread that he had, and he broke it and gave thanks and gave it to them. 
but something different transpired now. A really neat thing took place. Not only had he ordered the food, but now with the disciples, he became the food. He took that bread, and we just celebrated the Lord's Supper here on Easter Sunday uh, via video. He took that bread, and he says, this represents my body. And he broke it and gave thanks and said, do this in remembrance of me. He took the, the wine, and he says, this is the blood of the new covenant. Take and drink in remembrance of me, for it's been poured out for many. And so in this moment, we begin to see what takes place. Jesus, he took, he gave thanks. He broke the bread. And he suddenly, he's remembered. Look at verse 31. It says, Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. He was remembered, and he was revealed. Wow. That is just amazing when I look at that. You know, when he took that bread at the Lord's Supper, he didn't say, when he broke it, and say, now, now I'm breaking this bread. Do you, do you know what this means? Do you, do you understand? I don't think they would have if he had. He just simply took it. And you know that in that moment, after they took and they, they experienced what they did at the Lord's Supper with the breaking of the bread and the, and the drinking of the wine, saying, this is my body. This is my blood. That every time they did that, every time they got together and they took a small bite of bread or they took a swallow of wine, they remembered Jesus. They were tasting and seeing him. And now, in this moment, this happens again. It's incredible that we see this take place in the way that it does. You know, these disciples, you knew that they had to, they were going to be eating a lot together, and they're trying to figure out this new life that they had. I mean, it was just beginning. And here they are. This being Jesus describing himself and revealing himself in a way that he had done before. You know, God does that with us. And I'll never forget the first time I heard a song with our uh, daycare and every week we have a, a chapel service and so there's you know I have a short message we have songs that we sing and a lot of them are the traditional children's songs that we that I, my children sung when they were growing up and, and and it's a whole lot of fun and it's you know the kids love it but they sang a song I'd never heard before and at first I thought mm, I don't I'm just not sure about this one and the, the title of it was Jesus is Better Than Ice Cream. And I thought, okay. And anyway, as the song went on, I began to think about it. I thought, for that child, ice cream is pretty darn good. <laughs> it is for me. But And to begin to describe him in that way, for a child, may have a meaning that is beyond what we can comprehend even as an adult oh they'll grow and as they come to know the lord jesus they're going to understand that he's better than ice cream and everything else but when we taste and see that through the hospitality and and the the table fellowship this way we begin to understand the fullness of who jesus is He's caringly with us right now. He's with us as we walk through the pandemic in so many different ways. Well, let's keep going. As we look at the Scripture here, the third thing I want you to see is that, that we are to taste and see Jesus in the Scriptures. So look at verse, uh, at the end of verse uh, 30, he says, while, uh, he says, they ask each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked to us? on the road and he opened the scriptures to us folks you know we look back in verse 27 and we see here it says and beginning with moses and all the prophets he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself 
We must study the scriptures. Obviously, these men knew the word. And God will reveal himself into it in the scriptures. The, the, uh, the prophet David, Psalm 1, 2, he says, I meditate, Lord, on your word day and night. John 14, 26, we see the scripture where, where Jesus is talking to the disciples about him leaving. But don't worry, he says, I've got the Holy Spirit that's, that's coming. And he's going to reveal you to you all my teachings. And so we've, we have to learn and study them if, we're gonna, if he's going to be able to reveal them to us. So it's very important. It's very important that we, we don't just learn them, but we meditate and we listen with our heart. The scriptures, the heart is, is the seat of the emotions. It's, it's the place where the spirit connects and all the knowledge, it all comes together. That's why at the day of Pentecost, when, when all the people were there and, the, and we saw the miraculous uh, speaking in tongues where they were, this was when they were actually speaking, giving the gospel in all the other languages. And all these people came up to Peter and they're like, you know, what's going on here? And he says, you know, you know what the scriptures, this, this Jesus, the, the one you crucified. This is what's happening. It's, the, the scripture has been fulfilled today. And it says they were cut to the heart. The heart. Folks, we taste and see Jesus in the scriptures. Look at these last few verses. Not only do we, do we taste and see we, that we must study and that we must meditate on Him, but we are to reveal Him as well to others in the Scriptures. Notice what, what He says. He says, They got up and they returned at once to Jerusalem. They, they found the leaven and those that were assembled together and saying, It's true. The Lord has risen and He has appeared to us. He's appeared to Simon. Then He says, the two told them what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them and he, when he broke the bread. They were revealing to them what had taken place and how he revealed to them, not only the, in their experience, but in the scriptures of who, who he was. Folks, I, I, I was at a, a funeral just not too many days ago and this lady was a distant relative of mine. The pastor was speaking about her life, and he began to talk about um, her neighbor, one of her neighbors who was associate pastor of their church, and he would see her every day through the window studying the scriptures. And he spoke how she said, you know, I just wanted to see my life in light of the scriptures, and I began to believe what, what God said in his word, and that, yes, he loved he loved me with that everlasting love. And as I saw my life in light of the scriptures. This lady was able to taste and see the Lord through the scriptures. As he spoke, as he spoke in that small, still voice into her heart. Cleopas and the other man. They knew that God loved them. They knew in this what, at this moment, beyond a shadow of a doubt. The young boy I mentioned at the at the Christian camp. It was interesting as just as Cleopas was excited to go back and tell the others and his friend about what had just happened. This little boy was on a field trip with his school, as as many of the schools would come and visit the camp periodically. So it was in the fall of the year. And this little boy comes off the bus, and he sees Steve, the, the director there, executive director, and he, he takes off running. And he goes, look, and he opens his jacket, and he has the camp T-shirt that he got that summer. He was so proud. He, was, he wanted to reveal that because I believe that it, it revealed the agape love and, and the change in his life as he had been able to taste and see that the Lord is good as he had become a child of God. And he wanted to reveal it. He wanted to tell Steve. He wanted to tell others. Cleopas and the others wanted to tell. And the odd thing is, as we see in the scriptures, is that, that these men came back 
to Jerusalem. They left the place where Jesus had been crucified, had been killed. And when they came back, the rumors they heard that he had been resurrected, that he was alive, was true. And they knew it. Little did they know that the same would be true for them, and it is for us. That we must die to ourselves so that we can be resurrected and live the, the resurrected life in Jesus. As you're here today, and as we look and we think about what the future holds, this is what I want to leave you with. God has tomorrow taken care of. And all we're to do is to set ourselves apart to seek Him in the present moment through the Word, through the Scriptures, through that small, still voice. And when we do that, we will taste and see that the Lord is good. I promise you He is. Pray with me. Lord, we just thank you for this Word today. Lord, we thank you that we can come, Lord, with our hearts longing and hungry. And, Lord, that you will fill them, whether it be in this moment, later in the day, or tomorrow or the next day. Lord, you promised that you would never leave us or forsake us. And, Lord, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, I pray today in this moment, if there's someone who's hearing this message, Lord, that, that they want to taste and see you. Lord, as you are knocking on the door of their heart, I pray for you, young man or young woman. Maybe you're an older man or older woman. Say yes to the invitation. And taste and see that the Lord is good as you accept Jesus as your Savior and become a follower for the forgiveness of your sins. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you for joining us today. And I'm so glad that we could worship together. I look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you.